So we've got an interesting job here today. We're going to be rewiring this old Outback Radian system on this solar wedge building. And uh, we're going to convert it to a solar arc. So before the power comes, came out of the house, went into the building, and then inside the building, the, the power system would take the power from the panels and store it in the batteries and push it back into the house. Now we're putting the solar arc in the house and we're going to have, uh, and we're going to move the batteries and everything out of here. So we got to rewire this solar array. See, the solar array was wired for, um, see how it's connected in pairs of two, Antonio? We got to rewire it for like seven and eight, string of seven and a string of eight. But you got it for the solar. There's the old system. It's a radian. And then it's got these old batteries. These, uh, these are like 8A8Ds. And they're going to be really fun to get out. And then I'm going to, I want to, I'm going to dig that pipe up right there just so that I can move this box to the wall. Cause that, he's got, he's got a bunch of, uh, blue wire nuts and splices in there <laughs> and the wires are like big old thick wires look at this there's this combiner I'll show you remember that you've seen one of those right the combiner box but he wired in strings of two he's got two panels and then back so it, you, you're gonna see real quick that it's so much easier to string these systems it's so much easier to wire these systems when you're only bringing back two strings instead of having to do a combiner box and all these different strings our first job though is going to be able to kill we got to kill all these guys unfortunately humans and wasps are not compatible so this is one of those applications where we've got a uh, utility company that doesn't really they're in north georgia uh, the company's tva and they really don't want you to sell power back if you have a battery system and they don't uh i don't even think they allow it still so these systems have to kind of exist behind the meter this guy was in uh grid zero with the radian uh if you're familiar with that function it, it just tries to zero out your bill and use the battery even at night but uh, when i started explaining to him how much more money he could save by uh doing a solar arc between using a transformerless inverter and having all the uh Behind the meter functions the solar arc has because it has the CTs and it can do like uh, limited power to load or limited power to home. It can just offset, it has the ability to see how much power the whole house is using and offset all the power the house is using or as much as it can without pushing back to the grid where the radian was kind of limited to, with net zero. All it could do is offset power in the critical loads panel. So that's a little bit of a high level explanation of one of the reasons we're doing this. but. And the solar arc's just a lot better inverter than the radian. Sorry, sorry out back. And what could be a more beautiful sight than busting open and uncrating two beautiful arc batteries. So we're gonna be doing two arc uh, 51.2 100 amp hour batteries. These batteries are uh, uh, awesome. I'm, uh, I really like this battery. This is the battery I have at my house. We've been using these a bunch. There it is. It's a 5kW arc battery. These are 2,500 bucks each. And uh, they come with a base and you can sit them on a base. They also come with terminals on the back and on the front. I'll show, show you a little more about that battery later on. So one thing I really love about this battery is it comes with a base. If you don't want to use the uh, back terminals, the back terminals are for your higher amp connections. You've got two positives and two negatives. If you want to do parallel like more than five of them but uh, if you're going to use the front terminals then all you got to do is put the base on and set it up set them both next to each other and they're ready to go so it's kind of a good thing i'm out here this is a bunch of high amp splices and uh he's got them well i say high amp i mean large wire splices he could have ran 30 amps out here this however is just unacceptable the blue Blue wire nuts, blue wire nuts, but it didn't burn up. So I'm gonna pull them all out. Guys, this is a combiner box. This is kind of what I'm gonna call old school now. But uh, 
basically all the solar panel strings are coming in through these two uh, conduits and then they're each string of panels on this particular array panels are wired in strings of two so they're making about 80 volts open circuit 70 70 ish when they're um, under under load but uh, you can see all the positives from each string of panels is going each one each string of panels of two is going through a breaker and then they're getting combined the breaker the breaker teeth are biting onto this bus bar it's off so I'm safe and then that's your output to your charge controller this was the system 48 volt system with a charge controller um, we're gonna wire ours high voltage so it's gonna be a lot different and um, that was another string because they had to 15 panels doesn't work out on a quite right on a midnight if you wire in strings of two you should have done it in strings of three and then you would have only had to use one MFX 80 so this is a charge controller this is the this is the Outback uh, Flex Max or Flexware combiner box and there they go folks lead is dead in most applications so we're pulling out these big boys these were 225 amp hour at a 20 hour rate so this guy basically had a 450 amp hour 48 volt battery bank which i'll show you the math on that compared to lithium all right so i'm going to take you to the spec sheet and we're going to look at cycle life versus depth of discharge and right off the bat you see in that middle bar if you are cycling to 50 percent you can only do it about a thousand times which is three years so you're going to kill this battery pretty quick which is exactly what happened okay now we're on the arc spec sheet and uh, cycle life versus depth of discharge here you can see at 100% uh, depth of discharge you get 5,000 cycles go over to the 80% depth of discharge and you're going to get somewhere around 7,500 cycles and uh, if you do 50% depth of discharge it just goes right off the chart so you get a lot more power today's install pro tip how to cut a pipe in the ground, it's got a bunch of wires in it with a string. I usually start cutting it with that and then I get around it. So I know I told you guys one time already what I was doing here, but I'm rewiring the solar array for the solar arc since I'm bringing DC all the way into the house now. I'm gonna go ahead and make one string start right there and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven. There's gonna be seven panels, so it's gonna go like that. And then the other string is gonna start here, come down pick up all eight panels so it'll be a string of seven and a string of eight I actually realized that this guy just left one of the panels disconnected because he had everything wired in strings of two one of them was just sitting there so definitely get 300 watts more so with your IMO switch which is just this part right here um, this is a switch we use the heck out of this just comes apart this is actually what's on the side of most of your inverters for DC disconnect and uh, first thing I do is take it loose make some holes in it attach whatever conduit fittings I'm going to attach usually attach some strut on the back that's a unistrut with a quarter 20 strut nuts and a washer and then that really firms it up the switches just seems like it's a little bit um, I don't know what the right word is economical got an economical feel to it so uh, I like to just firm it up with uh, some strut and you know when it's in there like that I'm not really worried about it so then you can you can just mount it there and there and you're ready to bring your ready to ready to wire it up so I'm gonna bring the solar down come back up in that switch and then take it back to the house all right guys so we just got done rewiring this solar array it's uh 
15, 315 watt modules on a building is pretty impressive. But uh, it's going to be a lot more impressive now that it's on a Solar converter. We've got one string of seven. It goes like this. Whoop. And the other string of eight makes up the rest of the panels. So good old Antonio came through and clipped all the wires up tight, got rid of all that ridiculousness that was there and everything's looking really nice now. We've got our panels going into a uh, weatherhead and there's that weatherhead. I'll probably throw a strap on each side to keep it so it never sags, but it always has room to drip. And then here's our IMO. Got the IMO and then uh, that's a disconnect. And right there, those are the wires that are heading down back to the house. Uh, used to have AC coming out here on number six. So uh, a lot of people ask me about these IMOs. Just have a lot of questions about them. I tell everybody the switch is not, the body of the switch itself is a little bit flimsy. So I always like to mount it on a piece of strut really get it solidly attached standing on some pretty solid nipples but the switch itself is pretty bulletproof so there's there is uh 270 volts on the string of seven and then 315.8 volts on the string of eight and um it's kind of hard to wire one of these four pole imos this is the 25 amp four pole it is a job to wire this thing with all eight conductors and those are actually number sixes going up into the bottom um, but if you if you loop your wires back through behind and keep them back behind and just kind of swoop them in it's not that bad so next part tomorrow we're gonna come back we're gonna wrap this install up but now he's got a nice little nice little wedge shaped shed all right guys so there's that Old 4048, ready to go, ready to ride. Say what? See, está bien. And uh, a lot of you guys might be asking me, why would you tear out a perfectly good inverter and uh, put in a Solark? So for for those of you out there that's not obvious why you're not using Solarks yet, um, number one, his batteries were dead, so we had to do something. Uh, number two, he was never really happy with the location of his system. He was always having to go out there and check on it and do stuff the bypass was out there so can you imagine if he had any kind of fault he has to run out there in the middle of the night uh, so he didn't like that it was also you know the radian is was a pretty good inverter but it was really hard to use the the menus were hard the scroll wheel was instantly outdated once iPod got rid of their scroll wheel and uh, it was just a difficult system to use I, I think I don't think anybody any homeowner ever had a very good a lot of ease doing that so anybody who's using a solar knows how easy they are to program and navigate and use and uh, just how little interaction they actually need you really don't have to press any buttons or do anything uh, as I mentioned earlier this thing's kind of in a behind the meter it was in grid zero now it's going to be in zero power to home using the solar so uh, we had to do something the inverter was also out of warranty so you know it's just a matter of time you all that said the radian is still working and uh, so is the uh, the two flex maxes. I think there's an 80 and a 60. There's also a mate 3 and uh, That gears for sale. So Anybody out there needs a system. It's a 4048 and it's Working just fine with uh, all the stuff you need to hook it up folks. So say a prayer for us We're about to head out and Antonio's got everything strapped down pretty good. Okay. Got to take these dead batteries out of here.